I'm very pleased to welcome you to the inaugural workshop of the Urban Big Data Center. My name is Vanu Thakuria. I'm the director of the center. And as you probably know, our center is very new. It's an ESRC-funded center um, that's been in existence pretty much since end of January of this year. And we've been uh, doing a lot of work to get this um, ready and going. And hopefully today we will be um, you know, able to give you a snippet of what our center is all about. I just want to make a very brief um, presentation, um, just say a few words about 30,000 feet view of what the center is about, and then we will go on to the speakers. Our center is funded, as you know, by UK Research Councils, Economic and Social Research Council. We are supposed to be an, we are an interdisciplinary research center bringing together a very wide range of social scientists, urban social scientists, and uh, data scientists uh, to promote uh, really to take an innovative look um, and, and novel methods uh, to complex urban data that we have, um, you know, different researchers and agencies and businesses have collected over time. And our goal is not just to support research, but also to practice, uh, support practice and outreach. And uh, we, I think, would like to really look at some of the hard questions in social, behavioral, and the environmental challenges facing cities. We have st several strategic themes relating to city management, dynamic resource management, uh, and complex social factors, societal challenges such as social exclusion, lifelong learning, uh, migration, employment, economic development, and so on. And our center also focuses on multiple sectors within cities such as transport, housing, um, economic development, and energy, and environment, and others. Our goal is to support um, effective and responsible use of heterogeneous urban data and the methods that go to support the use of that data to address these complex uh, societal challenges. It's quite a big consortium of universities. We are, it's led by University of Glasgow and we have the six other universities uh, that are involved. Um, and one of them is located in the United States but the others are located within the UK. And we have um, co eyes that are spread across all these uh, seven campuses. And so it's quite a sprawling effort, um, to say the least. Um, in keeping with recent um, in, e e e e emphasis, data, this, uh, our center was funded by the e ESRC as a part of the Big Data Network. We are funded out of the Big Data Network phase two. And uh, as you can just, st the uh, recent emphasis on big data has indeed been staggering, actually. If you look at this picture over here, it gives you the number of papers in which the word big data was cited over time. And actually, the first paper was way back in the 1970s, and oceanographer app apparently wrote about it. So go figure. And there was some papers early in the 2000s where there was an emphasis on the term big data. But over time, in the last couple of years, this actually shows data only up to 2010. Um, really, there's been so much emphasis across the world on the use of big data for a variety of solutions in many different sectors, such as finance, health, and so on. And ours is the urban focus. I think that was a little bit missing, although there has been quite a bit of um, excitement over the fact that big data can be used in many different ways to address problems in cities. That's been going around for a while. And as you can see, internationally, there has been many different research initiatives. Um, the first one is from the US. Um, this, uh, the, then the UK Research Council has been paying a lot of attention to big data as well. Um, our data center got funded out of an overall 64 million pound effort from uh, the ESRC. And currently, there is a call, as some of you may know, from the EPSRC for to set up like a, I think it's a 20, 42 million pound center on, uh, the, on, uh, on the Turing Institute and similarly for, from the European Commission. Um, when we talk about big data, we really have a very broad vision of what our cent the type of data the center will be dealing with. Um, I don't know why this is jumping one step ahead, but uh, maybe I don't know if there's a way to stop it or something. Um, 
First of all, I think we are going to be looking quite a lot of at data from infrastructure-based sensors and machine-to-machine uh, -machine communications. <coughs> Many, most cities, modern cities in the world now have sensors that are embedded in roads and buildings and so on that are able to measure and monitor different things. We will be getting that sort of data. We already are. User-generated content, such as social media and so on. Administrative data that have been put together, uh, put out by uh, uh, government agencies Particularly recently, there's been an initiative uh, relating to open data, open government, and these are re relate, uh, leading to the um, you know, uh, opening up of data portals across the world, in cities across the world, really, which is leading to uh, researchers being, and analysts being able to access large longitudinal and repeated cross-sections of data. Private data, businesses, commercial enterprises hold a lot of data that are relevant on cities. You know, people's buying behaviors, you know, the way they do uh, transactions regarding their um, real estate, transport use, and so on, and surveys and censuses. And finally, synthetic output, if you will, from large numbers of urban and regional models that are out there to model transport demand or you know, energy um, consumption and so on. The vision of the center is to link these disparate data sources together um, uh, to enable transformational research and policies and governance, as well as business innovations, as well as to understand and build processes to make cities successful er er along some societally good indicators. But data are not enough. Data are data. I mean, I think the whole idea of big data, the value of it is in how you pull out information from the data. So to me, big data is not only the data, it's very much the methods and the models and the simulations or what have you that you use in order to pull out uh, information from data, to analyze data, to visualize data, to understand and interpret data. You really need the entire food chain, if you will, the entire supply chain of the data life cycle in order to make a difference in the challenges facing cities. And I think our center, the way we, are, uh, uh, way we are positioning ourselves is we would like to focus on a variety of different innovative methods, drawing on urban social science research methods, uh, such as urban modeling, statistics, data science, computational social science, and so on, as well as um, computational strategies relating to big data management, information retrieval, information extraction, as well as urban indicators research. And our center is really, across the seven campuses, highly interdisciplinary, bringing together a large number of co from the urban social sciences and the data sciences. I think if we have big data, we should not be shy about asking what are the big ticket questions that can be answered regarding cities. We need to have this broad vision, and I hope some of the work we are doing in the data center, will urban big data center, will actually stimulate fresh new look at some of these questions that have been asked for a long time in the urban and regional world, such as how to operate cities efficiently and effectively? How do you understand demographic drivers of cities? How do you address or analyze relationships between historically siloed urban sectors, such as education and transport, or you know, uh, employment and migration, and so on? And there are a whole lot of different questions in re relating to lifelong learning, social exclusion, how to build resilient and shockproof cities. All of these questions, I hope, are the questions that will be stimulated by bringing together all these disparate data sets and the methods <coughs> that go into it. In terms of this emerging area of urban informatics that I just mentioned, which brings together urban and regional models as well as the emerging new data science models, variety of different ways of doing knowledge discovery on cities are possible. And each one of them allows us to look at you know, historically different sources of data. And, but the problem here also is that they, linking data together I mean, it's very a di very difficult task, and you need to have some sort of sort of research questions driving them. I think data-driven modeling is important, but at the same time, I think it's very important to have some sort of research framework uh, uh, driving them. In this particular example, we are linking together weather, real-time weather data, and uh, uh, traffic data, and um, in order to do predictive analytics of traffic speeds given weather predictions. This really was an example of an analysis that was done for in-vehicle uh, routing in, by a private company, uh, Nokia, actually now owned by Microsoft, 
But uh, here again, I mean, if you're talking about linking together in real time weather data and traffic and transport data, both of them are hugely dynamic real-time systems, and getting the data together is a significant issue and significant challenge uh, in this particular example as we faced. And I hope our center will be able to develop some of the groundbreaking methodologies in order to do this kind of data uh, sensor fusion work. Another example is dynamic resource management relating to using social media data. Uh, some of my colleagues in the computing science uh, department in Glasgow did this kind of work. Um, the whole idea of how do you use social media data to detect events and incidents and to monitor emergencies in cities. This particular example used Twitter data to identify and, and uh, determine the presence of the um, West Mall uh, disaster, I mean, crisis, uh, terrorism crisis in Kenya, for instance, and it beat out news reports by quite a long margin. Uh, yet another vastly different type of data analysis, the whole idea of putting together data to understand why deprived neighborhoods have worse problems in, uh, with litter compared to uh, well-off neighborhoods. And in this particular example, you can see at the graph this, uh, at the bottom that shows uh, the uh, uh, street deprivation uh, um, uh, levels of different types of streets. And as you, the, and the neighborhood becomes more and more deprived, you have more and more um, uh, you know, a street litter. And uh, it was found that the service expenditures were not sufficient to compensate for the hugely different uh, difficult operating environments in some of the uh, deprived neighborhoods due to denser neighborhoods, more parked cars, more footfall, and so on. These three little examples that I just showed you, each one of them imp had implied in them very significant data linkage and sensor fusion and data uh, uh, integration type of work. We look for different end outcomes with this kind of work, but at the same time, it was really uh, and although we got meaningful results relating to how to you know, monitor road networks better or how to detect events better or how to do some advocacy work, let's say, about how government expenditures should be made across the city, for each one of them, it was possible only by putting together highly disparate sources of data. And this is the kind of uh, work that we hope to be doing in the center. Very quickly, our portfolio are to create a series of innovative data products to have a data service which will allow external users to use our data um, and to have a series of research projects that will allow us to build better data service and knowledge exchange and out, uh, outreach as well as training program. One example of a data product is this integrated multimedia data resource, which is a primary survey of approximately 2,000 households in Glasgow. Um, and uh, this is going to be a question and answer survey, a survey as well as a sensing survey using GPS and life logging devices. At the same time, when we collect this data, we will go through a significant multimedia data capture and information extraction effort involving you know, social media, pulling out information from social media, political world events, weather, traffic, so, ha so have you, so that we understand why people behave the way they do in a greater context. We understand how pe why people travel the way they do, why people have certain types of attitudes and um, you know, concepts regarding energy sustainability and so on and so forth, and we can understand what's going on behind the scenes in the broader context in their daily lives. Data services, we are going to have uh, for external users a service to help acquire data. Uh, we, will we will be building a significant data infrastructure as well as support external users to do a variety of social science uh, research projects using the data. And the, this is actually a hugely complicated and challenging task, the whole idea of creating an environment where we supply not only open data but also confidential data and um, all these kind of issues relating to resource discovery, metadata, ontology standards, uh, data ownership, licensing, and all those issues come into play. Um, finally, we are also going to be doing this methods research, um, three types of research really, a methods research relating to uh, big data information management, information retri retrieval, and so on, statistical data science problems, as well as urban indicators research. And, um, a series of rather ambitious urban research projects relating to transport, employment, migration, education, housing, and social exclusion. Um, so 
I don't know why this is jumping ahead in the Flickr, but um, let me come to one of the workshops that our group was involved in recently, which was conducted very recently in the Chicago in the US. We had a data uh, workshop that was funded by uh, the National Science Foundation's Division of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure. It was recently held August 11th and 12th. It was on big data and urban informatics. Uh, we actually got about close to 100 of, uh, full paper submissions, out of which 90 were complete, and 68 papers actually from about 11 different countries came and presented these papers. It was very exciting. Uh, 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 you know, two days for us, and there'll be proceedings out of this paper, as well as a book that will come out, edited volume that will come out from Springer Verlag. Now, today's workshop, as you know, we have, um, you know, all, uh, three very um, interesting uh, talks, starting with um, Sir Alan Wilson, who's traveled here from UCL in London. In my opinion, he needs no introduction. I have known his work since I was a grad student. You know, the whole Sterling approximation business out of spatial interaction models, that's how I know his work. Um, he is um, a professor of urban and regional systems in the Center for uh, Advanced Spatial uh, Analysis in UCL. And he's also currently the chair of the Home Office Science Advisory Council. And he just last year, I believe, or two years ago, finished finished editing a five volume set on urban modeling. So we are here to learn from him. Thank you.